Hey guys, how's it going? Will here once again deep in the bunker at Tone Proper AV. And in today's installment of our Midas Heritage D video series, we're gonna be walking you through how to use the patching page of the HD96. Now, if you're already familiar with patching on a Pro Series console, you're gonna feel right at home here. Patching on the Heritage D works almost exactly the same as a Pro Series, just with a more modern updated UI and a touch screen, obviously, instead of the old trackball and cursor. All right, well, without further ado, let's just hop right into the patching screen. Uh, there's an easy shortcut button to get there at the top of the window here, or we can also head over to our menu on the right, uh, and we have a button there to get to our patching screen. So just like the Pro Series UI, the left side of the window contains all your sources, and the right side has all your destinations. Now, front and center at the top of the window are the lock and unpatch buttons. We'll talk about those more in a minute because they're very important. Now on the outer edges of the patching window are gonna be your connection groups with your physical connections at the top under external. So that's gonna be all of your analog connectors on the console and on a digital stage box. Uh, also your expansion cards on the console and your Ultranet output for Behringer P16 personal mixers and Ultranet equipped turbo sound speakers. Right below the external groups, we are gonna have our internal groups, which is gonna be you know all of our input channels, our output buses, our insert sends, our compressor side chains, all that kind of stuff. And then right below that, we're gonna have all of our effects patch points uh, for doing our sends and returns to our effects racks. Now tapping any connection group brings up all the connections available to us within that group with larger groups like buses and inputs being sorted into pages. So you can see we have aux 1 through 48, aux 49 through 96, our matrices and our master buses, also our inputs 1 through 48, 49 through 96, and 97 through 144. That's a crazy number. Now to get started with patching your inputs and outputs, you'll first wanna make sure to unlock the patching screen using this button that we talked about earlier at the top. Now anytime that you leave the patching window and come back, this is gonna lock again. While this can be a little bit annoying at times, it does help to prevent you from accidentally making a patching change, uh, which can honestly be easy to do with a touch screen like this. All right, now that we have unlocked our patching window, we can start patching our inputs and outputs. Now patching a single connection is easy as two taps. Just tap on any block on the source side, then tap on the destination that you wanna patch that to over here on the right. This works in reverse too. You can tap on a destination first and then the source, and that patch has been made as well, works exactly the same. Now we can go ahead and unpatch those two connections that we made just by highlighting them and hitting the unpatch button. Now they're gone. Patching multiple connections at one time is super easy too. Just by dragging your finger across any number of source blocks allows you to select all of them. And then just tapping on one connector on the destination side, it will then sequentially patch all of those sources that we selected. Now we can go ahead and unpatch those because there's another easy way to do this too. Tapping and holding on any block in a group will select all of the connectors within that group, uh, which does the same thing as just tapping and dragging across all of them. So we can see that now we've patched one through eight just with two taps. We can go ahead and unpatch those again. All right, now let's add a digital stage box. Right now I have a DL251 down here on my left connected to AES50 ports one and two using some shielded Ethercon cables. And as long as the DL has been updated to the latest HD firmware, uh, which we'll cover in another video, the Heritage D should automatically detect it. All we have to do is tap add new device under our external sources section in the top left and then tap auto detect. Now we have all 48 inputs and 16 outputs of the DL251 available to us to be patched anywhere on the console and it's automatically detected the device type at which ports we have it connected to. Another thing that you may have noticed is that we have meters available to us on every single block. So I actually have a mic connected to input one on the back of the console. So if I were to go to my built-in IO, Check, 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 check. You can see that we have signal coming in there. I could gain it up or down, and you can see that signal's coming in pretty hot. And if I were to patch that to input one by unlocking our patching window, you can see we have that meter over here on the destination side of our patch as well. So it's super cool that we can see our signals uh, straight from the patching screen and where they are being patched to and if we're getting signal from one place to another. Patching works the same whether you're connecting preamps on a DL to inputs on the console, channel inserts to effects racks, Dante outputs to direct outs, or any other connection that you could possibly think of. On the HD96, any source can be patched to any destination whether it's physical or virtual. The routing flexibility is just really awesome. All right guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you already own an HD96, we hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And if you're looking to purchase one, feel free to shoot us an email at sales at toneproperaudio.com or call us at 888-283-3293. We hope you liked this video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you did. Uh, it really helps us out. And also check out the description box below for a link to our website. That's toneproperav.com. And make sure to stay tuned for more tutorial videos on the Midas Heritage D coming soon. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.